What about me? What about Liv? Is Becky Lynch overpushed? What about poor Liv Morgan? She's got a story. Why isn't she getting a WrestleMania title match as well? Mm. Decrees Twitter. I am Luke Owen, D-A-D. I'm joined by Dan Layton, the truth, the professor, your jam that champion, Dan Layton. And welcome to the Wrestle Podcast review of Monday Night raw please do press the subscribe button give us a little thumbs up leave a comment down below if you're watching this vod with what you thought of this episode of raw and our general topic of becky lynch Liv morgan uh rhea ripley what's going to happen next week there's quite a lot to unpack from these last mm. the couple of segments we're going to talk about in the opening section of this if you're watching us live why not join in with our wonderful community uh because they're having a great time with this show and they're having a great time chatting to each other because unlike twitter they're full of sensible people so join the live <laughs> conversation there and if you want to have your thoughts read out on the air wrestle.com forward slash support is the link in the email and the website to click and you leave a comment on there we'll read out all of them above the five us dollar amounts before the end of the broadcast cast mm. uh, i thought this was a fairly good episode of raw yeah, yeah. i i really enjoyed it actually i thought yeah. on on the whole there was an awful lot to think about an awful lot to talk about um and we're in a crucial period for just that well what i particularly enjoyed about this episode of raw is that uh, barring a handful of segments building for mania yeah, and like asking questions about Mania. It's almost like after every segment, I'm like, oh, what could this mean for WrestleMania? Oh, what could that mm -hmm. mean for WrestleMania? You know, there was a, like the Street Fight was just really good. Yeah. But it didn't make me think like, oh, I wonder what they're doing for WrestleMania. Mm. Or like, you know, the way. Yeah. Losing to, I was like, I don't really think about, oh, I wonder what they're doing for me. But, and yeah, even with that, there's something to talk about. I've got, yeah. there, there was a, there was there's a lot of digital exclusives that I found quite interesting this week. Yeah. Uh, we'll, and we'll, Raw Talk stuff that can even come into the conversation. And we'll get, how rare is that? We'll get to that way one later. Yeah. But uh, yeah, on the, on the splits, perhaps, on the, the path to Splitsville, perhaps. But anyway, we want to talk about this as our opening segment for the broadcast today, which mm. is this whole conversation that has seemingly come about over the weekend about Becky Lynch, Liv Morgan, and Rhea Ripley. There's kind of two avenues to go down here. Yeah. And I do want us to go down both of these as well. One of them, I didn't really see anything of until sort of like the last 24 hours or so. Not even the last 24 hours, the last six hours or so. Because mm. I've been sort of listening to Fightful were talking about it and I started looking into it. This idea of some people being upset that Becky Lynch won the Elimination mm -hmm. Chamber, feeling that she is overpushed and that she is featured too much. Excuse me. And no, that it's she, okay. Don't get choked up about it. It's she's <laughs> always in title matches. She's always on WrestleMania. And poor old Liv Morgan's not being given this shot. Which, you know, I, I think is a, is a, a Thicko Deluxe take. Um, <laughs> but we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. I, I'm, among the... Wrestling has podcasts designed for people to say thick things. And to say dumb takes. Like hello, like this. Look, we. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Speaking of, by the way, it's very important to know your brand and to protect your brand integrity. I don't really want to be associated with this. It's too close <laughs> to the middle for my liking. Uh, uh, if look, you look, could look, just look. sort of. I, the, the the people agree with me that Steiner Math is better than the Pipe Bomb. Every twenty minute Triple H promo about being the game is better than Steiner Math. The absolute nonsense. Um, Speaking of people on podcast saying stupid <laughs> things, <laughs> but you know. Vince Russo has a podcast exclusively so he can oh say God, dumb yeah. things. Bully Ray has a podcast exclusively so he can say dumb things on the internet and wrestling websites write articles about him. Booker T has one. Road Dog does it. There's a bunch of these people whose whole career is, I'll just say thick things on the internet because then people write articles about me and it's a way for me to stay relevant, right? So that's one part of it. I think of all the thick things that those people have said, mm. uh, this Becky Lynch being overpushed is among the thickest things I've ever heard. Yeah, so I don't actually know where it's come from. Like, oh, I saw... Uh, Yesterday we were in the office and Tempest had tweeted on Twitter stuff. So right. it is not from the, the podcast realm, although that might be coming soon. Right. Um, but yeah, the, the general consensus of it is it's always Becky. Becky is always the one that's pushed. Becky's always the one that's getting these title shots. Mm. She's been in like four of the last five WrestleMania title matches. So it's almost like, let's give, let's give somebody else a try. Okay. Which I think is a take to, to have. Mm -hmm. However... Uh, the reason why I think it's a bit of a dim take to have, a, a, a take that I, I, I vehemently disagree with, is because this is the story we've been building since the summer yeah. of Becky versus Rhea. I also think it's the biggest match you can do with Rhea Ripley as champion. I think that, unfortunately, with Rhea Ripley as champion, she hasn't had any credible challenges until Nia Jax mm. 
at, you know two days ago colossal he, over delivery and even then i don't think anyone went into that thinking that nijax was going to win but at least she had been built like a credible champion all the while becky has just been bubbling under the surface and just being constantly sort of featured and stuff she went down to nxt she came back she was really making that belt feel like something all the while to build up to this wrestlemania match where mm -hmm. she's going to win the elimination chamber and she's going to face rhea ripley for the title for me, it's, it's just like it's the most logical thing. I'm genuinely surprised to hear that people thought Liv Morgan might win the Elimination Chamber. Well, I think it's an interesting one because I'm a fan of Liv Morgan. Mm. I like her um, look. I think, you know, she, she, she's stunning. She's athletic. She's She's got a great commitment to her character. Even when they were giving her the I Like Pain gimmick, she was, you know, going 100% into it with the blue tongue. She always had something else in the Riot Squad. Like, she was really committed. I think... I think she's got a lot going for her. Um, I think there is also a segment of her fan base on Twitter specifically that are um, a little bit... Oh no, I'm going to make them come after me. Aggro and tribal and, and... Honestly, come after me, I don't care. But it's also fandoms in general. This is what fandoms do. There are people who who they, they, they pick up... A, like Swifties, you know? Or or Olivia Rodrigo's fans, I think they're called Livies. I don't know. There are, <laughs> these... Uh, irony. Um, fan bases do this, right? They, they jump in and they defend their person and like, you know, you'd never hear a bad word said about Joe Alwyn until Taylor Swift and Joe Alwyn broke up and suddenly he's the devil incarnate and it's that kind of thing of it's a very interesting part of our popular culture and this is the wrestling version of that I think looking at it from an objective standpoint of someone who is not only a fan of these two individuals is also a massive fan of women's wrestling in general they it is, it is just fundamentally incorrect to say that Becky Lynch is over pushed Becky Lynch is the correct amount of pushed and not only that she is bending over backwards to put the ladder back down behind her. It's not one of those things of like, I've made it, good luck to the rest of you. She's reaching down and trying to pull people up. You can rattle off a list of names who are on television more regularly now because of Becky Lynch. Someone like a Tegan Knox just wasn't around and then got the opportunity against Becky Lynch. And now, yeah, she's mired in a, in a weird tag division that they don't really know how to book properly. But she's on telly. Tiffany Stratton is all most people were talking about after the Elimination Chamber and is a made woman in part because of the incredible series of matches and the program she had with who? Becky Lynch. Lyra Valkyria is the current NXT Women's Champion and got a win over who? Becky Lynch. Zia Lee was given an opportunity, you know, has that panned out for her? No, but that's got more to do with Zia Lee than it's got to do with Becky Lynch. Zoe Stark's another one. Zoe Stark is another one. Like Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch had a, a, a feud that stuttered in many places through really no fault of their own, honestly. Um, that steel cage match, at, I want to say payback, it might have been fast lane, I can't really remember, but the steel cage match that closed that feud was absolutely brilliant. And in the process, we got a couple of really good matches with Zoe Stark. Again, the 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 lack of opportunity, the lack of booking, the lack of sustained, Follow. yeah, is far more to do with the people in the top, the people in control of the creative, than it is any of the women, and especially not Becky Lynch. Becky is the only. There are five women who have main evented WrestleMania, right? Two of them are no longer with the company, unless. Um, <laughs> did you see my little joke yesterday? I did not. It's, know. It's, I was proud of it, so I'm going to repeat it on SmackDown. Um, Dakota Kai said that. We're going to make damage control pay. And she really emphasized the word pay. How do you pay for things? With money. Where do you get money from? Banks. Sasha Banks confirmed. Um, it's very good. Thank you. Uh, big business. Um, but anyway, two of them are no longer with the company. One of them is on the injured list and the other one is Bianca Belair. Right? Charlotte and Bianca are both overpushed as well. It, let's not forget it was this time last year that we were complaining that... Um, Super Bianca. Super Bianca. Um People are just not satisfied in general. There is something about being one of the only women who's ever been in that spot, who's ever been face of the company in that way, going, I've got experience that the men have in spades. They can look to anyone to have a legends match, to have that advice, to bend the ear of someone in the locker room. The guy who runs the company at this point creatively is someone who knows what it's like to be at the top of the mountain. They can get his advice. In the women's division, we don't really have anybody. I'm that person. I want to be that person. I want to offer that to the new generation of women so that their next generation of women doesn't have the issue that I had. You know, she's the right amount of pushed. I find the idea that she's overpushed to be absolutely 
bonkers. I do too. And really, this would not have been my main topic for today's show. Mm. I probably would have gone. In fact, actually, the, the first thumbnail I made up for this was Bloodline Hunter because I, I love oh that God. Line, final line from Kanye. I thought it was so so en- so entertaining. I thought it was so interesting. Mm. The only reason I went with this is because or pivoted to this because I thought, well, we've done a lot of Cody yeah. led things. So like, let's let's try a different. It's uh, an interesting concept. conversation to be had. I think it's inter- and the reason why I wanted to do it for this show in particular is because sure. You can look at the, the sort of the Twitter reaction to this, and yeah, it's a small pocket of Liv Morgan fans that are calling for this and saying the Becky Lynch is over pushed. Four of the last six WrestleMania main events, yada yada yada. Or uh, you, uh, that's the other one. Never puts anyone over, which I, you know, you is factually been, incorrect. Factually incorrect. Nia Jax got put over by her like what th- two months ago? Yes. Well, we'll come on to that in a, in a second, actually, because I think that does tie into this this opening segment. Um, but it felt like this episode of Raw was leaning into that. Mm. We'll come on to it in a little bit, but later on in this episode, Liv Morgan and Nia Jax are having a match. Becky causes a DQ, which Liv Morgan is pissed off about. And Liv has a go at Becky Lynch backstage and says, not everything is about you. And it really felt like this was WWE listening to what fans were saying about Becky Lynch online and are now leaning into that to make it part of the show. Hmm. So next week, it's Nia Jax versus Becky Lynch. I fig- I feel, I figure... Liv Morgan's getting get involved in that, cause a DQ there. And that could set up a multi-person match for WrestleMania. I am kind of over the multi-person match because it feels like every world title match has had this. What if this person gets that in? Let's add this person. It's t- every 10 years. They add someone into a world title match, you know, this sort of thing. Um, but I, I, with the Liv thing, I was like, Maybe this is going to be a multi-person match, though. Like, maybe this is going to be we're going to add Liv Morgan into this match. Do you think that there is a chance that Morgan does get added into the title match? Do you think it's better if they keep it as Rhea versus Becky or and see on top of all of that? If not any of those two, what do you do with Liv at Mania? So I actually really liked what Liv brought to this episode and to the segment in question. Um I really like that she's had a bit of a bite to her since her comeback at the Rumble. Um, Her championship reign of, was it last year? Or the year before Extreme Rules was, when she had a program with Ronda. That was a bad program. It was a bad program. And and nothing on Liv either. No. That was, again, that was two women who were creatively stifled with a bad feud. This is what I was going to say. And 50% of that feud did not care to be there anymore. Yeah, I was about to say exactly that i apologize and and actually that is kind of what then leads to me being impressed with what she's done on this return is because it's you know she's always been someone who like i said is committed and is willing to go there there's something about the the level of bite she's got even i didn't think they did a brilliant job with the elimination chamber build um in the women's side of things um because it felt like they didn't really set up the fact that either challenger either person who had come out of wrestlemania with uh, sorry, come out of the chamber with that belt is someone becky lynch would want to go after they really didn't look at that they didn't even explore or play with that at any point when Liv came out during that nonsense everyone gets an entrance promo segment she was someone who said something that made me go oh yeah you have got deep history with, with rhea ripley you have got you were like the last person to pin her i think is the point she was making that's interesting This segment here where she is backstage and and she says to Becky, it's not all about you, not everything is about you. There was a bite to that where I found that, oh, that's that's a little something. I don't like the idea of a multi-person match at Mania. I think there are, at this point, 26 different matches, all the belts, with really the only exception being Bailey and Eo Sky. And by the way, let's talk about Bailey and Eo Sky at some point because they didn't (laughs) seem to want to. Um... That's the only one why I think that's nailed on singles. Uh, I don't want to see Sami Zayn inserted into the, the world title picture. I don't think that's going to happen at this point. But I don't want to see Liv Morgan inserted into this one. Because I think it's Liv's not there yet with this character. I think this character is nascent. I think it is right at the beginning. I think there is a lot of room to grow, to play, to explore with what this character could be, with what this bite she's bringing to the table could be. And I think that there's equal amounts to play with on the Becky and Rhea side in terms of what is organically happening to Rhea Ripley with her fan connection and what we know of Becky Lynch as a creative performative performance talent 
you know? So I think this is the wrong time for Liv to be involved in it. There is no reason why Liv couldn't be the first few coming out of Mania or even have a potential big program at SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like, like, this is not the time for that. This is the time, however, to plant seeds, you know? And as we've seen over the past six months or so, that's what WWE in this era like to do. Plant seeds, allow them to grow. They a case in point is the wrestlemania match itself of becky versus Rhea. Mm. like they were planting those seeds last year mm. you know summer i mean i said i keep saying they've been building to this since the summer of last year but if you want out even before then they had their first stare down interaction and then throughout the year they have just been ships passing in the night just meeting each other backstage staring staring at the title and that's all it is and when they were doing it i just kept saying i was like well that's your wrestlemania mm. match don't do it at SummerSlam. You don't do it at Survivor Series. You don't do it at the Rumble. That's your WrestleMania match. It's the biggest match you can do for Rhea Ripley. It's a great match for Becky Lynch. And you've planted the seeds. And I think that's one thing that I think is in the new era of WWE, fans have got to readjust to this idea of things just take a bit longer to get to mm -hmm. now. We don't just fire off these feuds immediately. We plant the seeds now and then we come back to it in four months time and just sort of see where we're at with it sometimes with that i don't think it fully works yep. i chad gable is one i will always, i'm going to keep bringing this up as an example incredibly hot in september of last year then they just let it completely cool off and now they're trying to reheat up again but what they could have done is been like let's keep heating this up and keep building and then we'll build to wrestlemania and you know we'll fire on all cylinders but i think with some things they can plant these seeds and just let them grow over time and then you get really excited for it so i get why some live fans are disappointed that it's not live morgan at wrestlemania but it's not like it's live morgan's gonna be gone in three months time it's like it could be live morgan's time next year it could be live morgan's time in two years time when it's the right moment and she's the right person at this point in time it is not the right moment and she's not the right person do you know who made a really great argument about sort of that exact thing me well, well, no, uh, they piggybacked off you, perhaps. But <laughs> Becky Lynch did. There was an interview with uh, Inside the Ropes, I think it was, and if I'm wrong on that, I apologize, but whoever it was uh, asked her about the, the fact that we never got a singles match with Ronda and how Becky yeah. feels about that. And she gave what I thought was an exceptional answer. She took a long pause to think about what she wanted to say. And the answer she delivered, and I'm going to paraphrase it, do seek out the clip, was basically sometimes people believe in the creative part of the company that it will just stay the grass will stay green and it's not the case and basically you the idea was we'll put charlotte flair in this match at wrestlemania 35 and the singles match will just stay green for at some point in the future well that isn't how it worked and we're seeing and she even made direct reference to the fact that that's what's happened this year rock and roman was always considered evergreen it's just it it's not this year because we want to see something else there is a you, you your chad gable one is interesting because i feel like and we'll talk about it within this show chad there is i think when you are beating uh double cream to turn it into whipped cream there is a a while to get there and then you get to the perfect spot for it to be perfectly whipped cream and the set it goes from perfectly whipped to over whipped like that if you're not careful, I think when they finished the Chad and Gunther story, there was no way in hell they were going to be able to keep that hot until WrestleMania. The time to strike was then and there. The time to strike with Becky and Rhea is now. And specifically the time to strike with playing with the, as I said before, Rhea growing growing into her role as, as potential accidental anti-hero babyface and maybe playing with a Becky heel turn. The time for that is now. The time for Liv Morgan is is later down the line because she is right at the beginning of the whipping stage. Yeah. Right? I, I, I totally agree with you on that one. Mm. So, I mean, to answer the, the question of, you know, the title of this, is Becky Lynch ever pushed? No. no! I, I don't think she is at all in the slightest. I think it is, is, it is a remarkably, I think, a bad faith take from people who are perhaps impatient because they just want to see their favorite get pushed right now and the yeah. way uh, the way to react to that is oh well of course becky won because she's just over pushed without really taking into consideration what that actually means and sort of looking at facts as they're yeah. presented to them because like look what happens if becky wins this belt and goes into a feud with Liv morgan she could probably elevate Liv to a whole new level well on that note 
I think Rhea's retaining. Well, this um, is this is so so here. so which is what which is bit. why we're going to go into lane two of this conversation, which mm. is a lane I'm very interested in. Also, just want to say in that multi-person thing, it might not just be lived. Nia Jax is also there as well. Mm-hmm. Nia Jax is now being involved in two of these things. When this episode started, though, I thought we're going to do Becky versus Nia because well, Nia beat her on the road to Elimination Chamber because Nia was going for the belt, so it just makes complete logical sense to me for Becky to beat Nia while she's on her road to WrestleMania. It's what I would do. I think mm-hmm. that's a completely logical thing to do. But if she is going to get screwed out of a match again next week, then maybe it'll be a triple threat. It could be fatal four-way. And but I don't, again, I don't think that's the right move to do. So that's that's avenue number one. Avenue number two is, and you were talking about this in the office earlier, and you're quite excited to talk about this. The idea that Rhea Ripley has just become a babyface. In the fans' eyes, yeah. she's changed nothing about her character. She's changed nothing about her presentation. But the fans' reaction to her, kind of like Swerve Strickland in AEW, where they haven't changed anything about who he is, is just like, no, you're a baby face now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to treat you like you're my hero. So that's, you know, that's only interesting. And then it's going, well, okay, what do we do with Becky then? You could just do, because Becky has always been, you know, she's over as a baby face. People love Becky Lynch. You could just do big baby face big baby face it's stone cold versus the rock at wrestlemania x7 the two brightest stars the two supernovas and they're going to collide or do you lean into this further and you go into a slightly healer direction for becky lynch pull back some of that big time bex mm. energy you're a big time bex greater oh, than the man yeah, yeah so you bring in some of that heelish side to it which only further elevates rhea ripley's baby face status and perhaps do a brett austin mm. it's a cliche to look at it that way isn't it like the, the the idea of pointing to anybody and saying they're the next steve austin is a cliche but rhea ripley more than most who get lumped into that has kind of embodied it it's been very organic she's just become someone that we all want to be she is the anti-hero i go about <laughs> this is so cringe to admit publicly there are parts of you know when you walk around your flat and or your house and you're just not up to anything and you're thinking I want to do her entrance. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Where she just sort of stamps big it. stomp. And, the, and also this is the idea of like, this is my brutality. Like in this era of music that is crap, that's one that slaps, oh, right? Yeah. And you know who it is the second and it's going to get the action. Who's the other person with that, by the way? It's Becky Lynch. Um, she was a situational baby face for the Australia crowd. You know, poor Nia Jax, Sydney born. Nia Jax didn't get the hometown reception that she probably deserved. Um, <laughs> no, I'm doing a joke. But um, she was a situational baby face, but she ultimately is someone who, like, because of her look, because of her demeanor, the way she carries herself, she has that anti-hero energy. I'm going to disagree with you when you say they haven't changed anything about her character, because I think that is true until this episode of Monday Night Raw, where there was one segment where she did something that I was like, oh, that's interesting. And they put a bit of sympathy on her. It was specifically when the Judgment Day were backstage having confronted Gunther. Normally they have a moment like that and then Rhea pops up and she's like, you guys, I'm the runner of this Judgment Day. I'm going to have to fix all of your nonsense. Like, you get in and gear, all this stuff. This time she just was very like, Dom, Gunther, really? Like, what are you doing? There was something restrained about it. Something almost hurt. Something a bit Mamacita about it. You remember when China went from just being, you know, China to being Mamacita? There was something about that to the character. I was like, oh, that's an interesting note to add to the the flavor that is Rhea Ripley. Um, That's something that you can't arrest if you tried and you shouldn't try. Ride that wave. She's making it she's one of the top baby faces already even if it's not written down on the sheet people buy her merch people you know it's, and that is the austin thing mm-hmm. when we talk about brett austin and i watched the match today in the office and i did a bunch of reading around it because obviously there's the whole business of that's the the match where the double turn happens that's not correct no it's not what is correct i would argue is that that is the match that solidifies the double turn that's it has already been building this point and even bruce pritchard said this on something to wrestle that that, that is a misconception it was already in it was already being not not that it was in the works creatively they were forced into it because that was the way the audiences were reacting brett was already a heel yeah austin was already a face so it was like right let's confirm that in this moment because there's a moment where brett without, turned, cha- without changing any of their characters either. well brett goes a bit bashy with, yeah. a, with a chair halfway through the match and, and starts slapping fans hands on the way so i would argue there's a change there as well but on the on the build to it brett's got a point and of course he has. austin's just being austin 
here, you have an opportunity to do that with Rhea Ripley. And then on the other hand, you've got Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is one of the best to ever do it. She, B- Big Time Bex is one of the best characters. I love Big Time Bex. The man is great, but the Big Time Bex was so much more interesting to me. The swagger. And she's earned it. Do you know what I mean? She's got so... She can carry herself with that mic. I'd rather her have these cutting lines than call Dom a kumquat. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I almost see, even see something in the match. If you want to take the belt off Rhea, and there's an argument to make that you shouldn't, and then Liv Morgan's heel turn, the revenge talk, and take a different dynamic as she becomes villainous Liv Morgan taking on Rhea Ripley. Mm -hmm. Um, If you want to put the belt on Becky, you could probably recreate that Austin passes out in the sharpshooter moment with a disarmor and have Rhea Ripley pass out and not ever quit, never submit, never say die. It's Rhea Ripley, I'm mummy. Like, I'm always on top and I'm never, ever going to stay down for three. Because how? Because with her rise, if you want to take the belt off her, you're going to have to defeat her in some way. Do it in the way that makes her look the strongest. It's just a really interesting prospect. I think, for me, the most satisfying would probably be making Rhea face, have her retain, and have Liv Morgan go full heel. I think that is something interesting to play with. Yeah, they're going to be in a really a fun dynamic to be yeah. in. Because they have presented Rhea as this dominating heel for the majority of this, this run. It's only really in the last few months where we have just sort of seen this slow rise of oh no she's babyface and sometimes it wasn't even just oh it's babyface because of australia and like it was quite purposefully like booking her as the babyface and then in australia proper babyface in parallel mm. and now that's just carrying over yeah whereas now the two top baby faces that you had to possibly go against her in becky and live like oh actually maybe we could just turn both of them heel mm. and we'll just run with Rhea as the top baby face and then becky and live can be the top number one and number two heels so yeah up against her, which i think is a, a fun dynamic to be able to play with i think Rhea is you don't have to change anything about who she is. No. Not a single thing. The only thing you really need to change, and I think we're going to be getting this before Mania, is the split with Dom. Mm. I think it's been very noticeable that she's not been interacting with Dom for, well, a, the, for a while. This now. is it, because they they were very... The Judgment Day aren't situational babyfaces in any way. No, they no. are just straight heel. Yeah. Rhea... When I say, when I say situational babyface, to be abundantly clear what I mean by that, it's that because she's in... Australia, she's going to be cheered anyway, so we're going to give her a heel challenger like Nia Jax in a way that we maybe wouldn't have with other challengers, like Becky Lynch in theory is the face and all that stuff. Um, but also, just in general, it's the, it, it's because she's so cool, we want to cheer her because we like her, because we like the way she interacts with Dom, because we like seeing a woman in that position of power kind of thing. It's so interesting, and they've had to keep them separate, and that's why them coming back together on this episode and that moment where she seemed quite genuinely hurt by Dom just going into business for himself kind of thing was so... And, and a, a worry about Dom. Dominic Mysterio against Gunther. We all know how that's going to go. Rhea knows especially how that's going to go. I did like the idea of Becky and Dom having a little program in the lead up to WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I lo- I'd love to watch a Dominic Mysterio versus Becky Lynch match. Wouldn't that be a bit chaotic? Be funny. Um, but actually, this is, this is interesting too. I think they've got so many threads that they can pull out and play with and see what they can knit together. Yeah. I love it all. Because Dom is, he's a heat magnet. Mm. You know, people really like to boo Dominic Mysterio. The second he grabs a mic, you boo him. It doesn't work with this Rhea Ripley baby face that they've now got because people want to cheer Rhea Ripley. So, man, like in the lead of Mania, if you want to really solidify this, or even doing it at WrestleMania, the moment where she boots Dominic Mysterio, she gives him a big boot, gives him the rip title or something, the crowd will go ballistic for it. Or imagine if Dom is part of the reason that she loses the belt. Like, or something along those lines, yeah, and you continue it through after WrestleMania. But yeah, like, it's yeah, you no, know, we're talking about. And those then you build to, a, and then like maybe Becky and Liv have a little program for a minute while Rhea gets to have a program with Dom. Rhea versus Dom. Oh, back, give me that backlash, friends. Yeah, there's so many options you can play with with this with these characters when you think about them in this lateral way. I love yeah. it. So yeah, I thought it was a lot of the stuff I found very very interesting, and it's why I wanted to lead with this. I know a few people in the early doors of the chat were like, "Why are you leading with this in the subject?" But I was like, "Because I think it's the most interesting thing from the." show is a, on a show where there was a lot of interesting stuff happening yeah i, I think, think this was great i think the the becky the potential of a becky heel turn wwe leaning into this fan reaction though it's it's not as vocal as the cody reaction we got yeah. following that episode of smackdown it's not like we needed to do an emergency podcast about <laughs> the you know the, the reaction to this but i think wwe leaning into it, i think is an interesting choice i think the presentation of re is an interesting choice and it does lead us onto a path for WrestleMania. I just hope that path ends in Rhea versus Becky 
and that's it. I think it's, yeah. I, I'm I'm in for the singles match. I don't want to see Roman versus Rock versus Cody. I want to see Roman versus Cody. I don't want to see Seth versus Drew versus Sammy. I want to see Seth versus Drew. Because and also, I've got the same with Becky and Rhea. Let's not forget. We know that the Raw after Mania, people are going to start talking about next WrestleMania. You've got to save it to WrestleMania. You've got yeah. to save it to WrestleMania. We've got a year's worth of television to fill. Mm. Let's save some of the good... Like, think about 2000. A lot of the good stuff was happening in your, on your July pay-per-views, on your August pay-per-views. Quite famously, so 2000, WrestleMania 2000 is one of the worst shows, if not the worst show yeah. of the calendar year. But the whole year, there were stories. And, and, you know, just because it's a big match, marquee match, doesn't mean it has to only be at wrestlemania i i feel like i i i'm I'm more interested in having Liv morgan have a program in the months following wrestlemania than i am shoving her into a match now i agree well let's see what you think of this rest.com forward slash support where we read out all of your comments above the five us dollar amounts and farquhar forces kicking us off here to say becky and Rhea are still a level above Liv in all aspects of wrestling Liv wasn't ready for the title two years ago but since her return she's on a path to getting there i would get her involved with both Rhea and becky after WrestleMania to help elevate her. I think that some people on Twitter have wanted to compare Becky to Charlotte since she criticized AEW in 2022. The difference is that Charlotte was pushed over her peers, whereas Becky is booked as a peer to the other top stars, which Liv isn't yet. The Charlotte thing is always interesting because I'm a fan of Charlotte as well. I think she, on her day, she's absolutely incredible. I think there have been accusations that are fair of phoning it in on television. Um, and obviously also because she she was someone for whom Vince clearly had a preference, probably weirdly because of the third generation element of it, which is so so odd for him because he hated all of that. Um, he absolutely pushed her and shoehorned her in in places that she didn't Should need to be. Should not have been in that WrestleMania match. Completely agree. Um, With Becky and Ronda, of Yeah, but I mean, this time last year, Charlotte versus Rhea, we all wanted to see, I think we all wanted to see Rhea versus like Asuka or, or Rhea versus I want, Bianca. I wanted to see Rhea versus Charlotte. I, I remember who I, was for, the... for me, that was the match that made the most sense because that plays off the WrestleMania match they'd had a couple of years prior for the NXT Championship. So for me, it was like, well, that's the most logical story to tell is that right. Rhea actually beat Charlotte this time. I just, I thought, I, from, I couldn't remember if there was a, they'd gone like, wow, that was a weird choice. I thought, I think there was a conversation about that last year. But either way, I I think Becky is if if you could make an argument that Charlotte's been pushed in the places where she doesn't deserve it, her work speaks for itself, generally speaking, but she was absolutely shoehorned into situations where she wasn't supposed to be. Becky was never that. Becky had to scrap against that. So, so the idea did. that she's become the super cena is kinda of just mad to me. I think it's it'd be insane to show this level of reaction to the audience say in 2019 yeah like, you know uh, 2018 or whatever it was in the lead up to summer slam well she did the heel turn which did the heel turn and like the, you know then the, the the survivor series uh the nia Jax punch yeah. heard around the world yeah like when we were desperate to see becky lynch actually get pushed because they kept pushing charlotte over her we were like no it's becky's the one that we want mm. Now you be you can show people it's like man it's only in six years time people will be telling you that she's over pushed and they had this in a way with Bianca and, and comparing her to Charlotte no less. Do you remember when she came back and took the belt off Bianca straight away and everyone was really cross about that and then they used that for the character and oh my god the matches we got as a result of that like use it. Ben here said she's pushed correctly in reference to Becky Lynch hasn't been world champion for two years did great work as NXT champ made Stratton legit and put over Valkyria she's had uh, sure she has big WrestleMania matches every year because. Well, those always rule. Tell me Rhea versus Becky ain't a big deal. Like, it won't be a banger. Well, that's it. Yeah, the reason why she's always featured on WrestleMania is because she's a big star it's and you want to have your big stars on WrestleMania. Yeah. I think the other thing... Sorry, because I, I, no. I was thinking about this the other day as well. And it was listening to uh, Wrestle Club podcast talking about this. That kind of made me... This sort of like floated it as an idea and I hadn't really sort of considered it before. And it's something that we as wrestling fans have not really been given the opportunity to think about before either in WWE. But for, I would argue, for the first time in (laughs) forever, there is a hierarchy of the women's division. Mm. Previously, there would just be women at the top Mm -hmm. and everyone else. Yeah. You can now look at the women's division and be like, oh, they're a mid-carder. Yeah. They're a lower mid-carder. Oh, that's your job act. Like, they don't. They never have that in really in WWE. They're just mm. they were just women. They were just like there's women there, and some of them are the champions, some of them aren't. Like that really was what women's role in mm. WWE was. But now, much like the men, there are main eventers, upper mid carders, mid carders, 
tag teams, lower mid carders. It's a fully fleshed out division. You talk a lot about uh, you, you. We talk a lot about um, what are they going to do at Mania? What's Jade doing? What's Bianca doing? What's Nia doing? What's whatever doing? Like Tiffany Stratton coming out of the Animation Chamber, I thought about three different feuds she could go into. One of which was Naomi, and I've got a little story from that one from that they've shown me on TV that they could use. Like the 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 argument for a a, a mid card women's belt is sort of there. It's, start, it's starting to gain some actual steam. When in before I was like, I don't really know what you're going to do with it because they don't really do a lot with those women's tags. They haven't developed that division well enough. But in terms of single stars, there is an abundance. I think there is an argument to be made for it particularly now as i go you know i've just presented that there are like there's other mid carders and stuff and that's why i think you know with Liv morgan you she's currently an upper mid card mm. you know or maybe you know just a mid card act within uh within this women's division but because previously it's just been you're either in title matches or you're not mm. if you're not you're seen as an a n other mm -hmm. but really like what you need to be looking at now is that like, oh you're just in a mid card feud which is a good thing to be in yeah and i don't think mid card feuds always need belts mm. like i think there's an argument there oh yeah enough too many titles because if you have one on raw that means you need another one on smackdown that's introducing two more belts into this promotion which mm. doesn't need any more belts it's a problem that AEW currently has there's mm. too many belts and the people don't care about enough of the belts so i i see both sides of the argument i think that there, you can just do feuds without belts but you also need a prize to fight for to make it to really solidify this idea that you have main event and you have the mid card. Yeah, especially when we're having these long reigns. I think that's the other thing. If there's a long reign and it's the same champion over and over again, it starts to feel like who's next yeah. that we can use. Whereas if there's a, a belt or, or a situation or a, or a tournament or a championship or whatever, I don't know, that is constantly fought for, a prize, as you say, I think there's a benefit to it. Space Viking. Becky, I love what they're doing with all four women involved from yesterday's angle, but it's not to get the reactions they want. I still love the angle they did, but Dom isn't enough to get rear heat, and Liv is the new Alexa with the fans. I really hope they don't pivot their one-on-one -on -one plans, but I kind of want Rhea to win now because they could build up to a Liv match down the line. Well, that's $15. Rustog <laughs> is the good Leaf in a dangerous tag team. Uh, what are all your thoughts on this? Uh, Rustog and the good Leaf. Let's talk and the good I leaf. I assume that's... Oh, oh, uh, maybe a naughty cigarette. Oh. Oh, right. Oh, I see. I've never heard it as the dan as, as as the good leaf. Well, there you go. I a jazz know. cigarette is what a I would know. A jazz cigarette. Is what I would know them as. Kuzu said, I sympathize with Liv fans, but you can't compare her to Cody. Becky won her shot at rear fair and square, just like Cody. She didn't steal anything. I get the frustration, but this is a doggy dog business and not everyone can be on top. Brackets, my addition, apart from Rhea Ripley. Mark <laughs> Flay, that's a gag. Mark Flay, a lot of uh, Becky over push tweets come from Liv Morgan's Stan account from what I could see. Adding to uh, her to the Rhea versus Becky match feels like a mistake, even as a Liv fan. Mm. I agree. Well, I mean, Sat was referencing this on the Elimination Chamber because he was like, man, he, he called this. Right. Absolutely called this bang on the banana. He said a lot of things in that podcast. A lot of them have not come true. But one of the things he did say that absolutely came true was he said, Liv Morgan standing hands. I'm going to go mad over this. Sat knows that kind of corner of the internet. He clearly does. He's, like, he's yeah. very switched on in that regard. Spectre, as someone who hasn't watched wrestling in years before the Rumble, Liv Morgan's story is a great underdog story. She missed months from her career from Rhea, and this is her chance to redeem after a second place Rumble return. Brett J. Rasmus said, I love Liv, she's fantastic, but the story being told is Rhea versus Becky. Becky is not overpushed. It needs to be known, yes, the pipe bomb is a great promo and objectively great, but Luke is right, the greatest promo of all time is Steiner Maths. Hey! I mean, actually, you can do that because my board, I've not even... <laughs> I've not even oh, removed no. it from when we recorded TLC. <sighs> That's the original right there, the original Steiner Maths that I wrote down. Stick it in the Hall of Fame. Also, I think that one's actually correct as well because I put Steiner Maths because I'm English rather yeah. than Steiner Math because I'm not American. Um, Brett here says... Oh, no, we just did that one. Mooks, uh, I don't know about Becky being overpushed, but Liv being treated poorly, uh, pretty poorly in Triple H's booking era. Remember, one of the first things that Triple H did is head creative was feed Liv to Ronda and then he never allowed her back up the card. I don't think Triple H has done great by Liv. I don't think Triple H has done great by the majority of the women's division. I think he's tried in certain places and had successes in certain places but then the number of balls dropped comparatively is pretty yeah. high. I don't think it's fair to say he never allowed her back up the card. She obviously was a tag team champion numerous times. Granted. I know. But also... <laughs> Also, she, she's been injured. Like, she's not been around. So it's one of those. And, and here she is in the Triple H era talking to the WrestleMania challenger for the championship. Mm -hmm. 
making a point of having an issue with the champion. You got to let it let it play out, man. Because I think there's a chance that it can't could... say that. <laughs> You'll get in trouble. No, no, you can now in the Triple H era. Oh. You're allowed to say the Triple H era. You're right. Yeah, I just you know me, I fidget. Uh, Geek of Arabia here said you mentioned the heel Becky idea and then I remember hearing boos from the crowd in response to Becky challenging Rhea which is curious I just think she's really good at it if they want to I mean it's one of those things where like uh, the go away heat would be so weird for someone like Becky Lynch, but if you want, if the, if it's going to threaten to be there, you might as well let her play with it. I don't think it's going to be go away heat though. I think it's just going to be you're not Rhea Ripley, heat. right? Like yeah. that's more of what it is. Like anyone, any babyface put in that position would get the same level mm. of booze, which is just like no, no. I, I appreciate that you're cool and everything, but you're not Rhea Ripley levels of cool. No one is. Because no one is. Uh, Akiko says, uh, since you mentioned Austin versus Brett, what if Becky locks in the disarmor and Rhea passes out an homage to, uh, to that where Becky turns heel and Rhea turns face? Becky plays into the over-push thing for her heel gimmick. By the way, I'd rather Rhea retain. So interesting because for a long time I was very much just get the belt on Becky because I want to see her do another version of what she did with the, with the NXT belt. But that feels like it would stifle Rhea's momentum. Mm-hmm. Even after she's held the belt for a year. Agreed. Wild. So let's get into this episode of Raw. Apologies that it's taken us 40 minutes to get here, but uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, we had that opening segment with Rhea, Dominic, and Becky with Nia Jax attacking her afterwards. Uh, for me, I wrote here down as like, this is not triple threat. This is just, no, Becky needs to beat Nia yeah. on her road to WrestleMania in the same way that Nia beat her on her road to Elimination Chamber. And initially I was sort of against it because I was like, well, hang on, Nia could be Becky's first program mm-hmm. like as champion. Yeah. Again, what I was thinking, well, we'll put the belt on Becky. Then over the course of the episode, that sort of changed a little bit. We then had Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I thought this was better than the match they had uh, a couple of Absolutely weeks ago. Um, they played this as a must-win story for, uh, for Sami Zayn. He had to win here. If he didn't win here, his WrestleMania road just might be an absolute roadblock so they did all of the stuff he kicked out of the kinshasa or rolled to the outside struggled to get back in at nine duck day another kinshasa hit two haluva kicks for the win i thought this is this is good stuff it was a good match and i i like the fact that they sold he sold it like he desperately needed it and i thought you know um someone you're not allowed to talk about pat mcafee actually did a pretty <laughs> decent job of selling it on commentary you know talking about being a champion when you have those moments where you lose it's it can be really mm. uh, stressful for you but in this moment sammy's been able to claw one back and, and that's what he needs to remind himself and get back on into winning ways i thought they did a good job since we you know we've kind of already talked about the naya live match uh what did you make of the uh the pat video thing uh, this week, what part video thing? Well, they did when they came back from the ad break. They did the replay. Oh, they get did... out of my life! No, uh, no. What the, do you mean the one they did in the middle of the Live Nia Max? Yeah, put it in the bin. I don't want that I, because that move in the Nia Live match where so it's a, it's a is it called a stretch, stretch muffler? muffler. I love the stretch muffler. It's a great move. And by the way, Nia adding more submissions like that to her arsenal. Oh, yeah, especially being the only person in the women's division of that size and stature, really is so cool. I love it. She gets in the stretch muffler and then just walks them over to the corner and just catapults oh, them into it. It's it was so good. So brilliant. And then it was I was like, I want to see that again. Show me another replay of that. And then there was a replay of that, but he draws a circle around her face and is like, look how much pain she's in. It's like, what to what end? You and I What are we doing? You and I clearly are not the audience for this. Because I was listening to Fightful's review of it and they were in stitches over this. They think it's so funny. And it's so entertaining. And they were I'm like, I don't Sean, want funny. Sean Rossat was like, they should do more of this. They oh, should do more of this across the show because Sean. it's really like, it's it's funny. And like Denise was like, I was in tears of laughter with it. I think don't do it in serious matches. Like I undermined the seriousness of Cody and Drew last week. Don't do it during the live and night, during the match where you're supposed to be trying to tell these high stakes stories. I think, like, I, I think it undermines a lot of the impact you're trying to have. Save it for a kickoff show. It's actively detrimental. Put yeah. it in the bin. I wonder what if we do a poll. No, I don't want to be let down by our audience. Well, I know. Cause like, well, this is why I'm, I'm <laughs> curious on this because I wonder if it is just a situational thing in terms of we're Brits, so we don't think it's funny, but uh, Americans do think it's funny. I'm I'm talking in broad generalizations here, but mm. all I all I know is the people that I've spoken to that don't like this are British, and the people who I have heard who love this are American. Which is why I was, which is why I wanted to do the poll. Let's do right. a poll. Come on, I mean you're in charge. Yeah, is it? Do you like it? Yes or no? That's what I'm I'm curious on. Do you like Pat Macus if he's sports nonsense? <laughs> Because it's not insight. 
you know what I absolutely loved of um, WWE's presentation uh, of things? Um, they showed a video package for New Day versus Imperium, and it was really cool. And Michael Cole said, "Was like this is a story that's been two years in the making." And the first thing he showed was two months ago. <laughs> like, yeah, is where, it? Where's the other eighteen months? Well, I, I think that did they beat them for the NXT tag titles? I don't remember because they because they just kept saying this all on the show. Sorry, it's two years in the making, two years in the making. But they only ever showed things from two months ago. And that's plenty of time. Like, because that's the thing. Like that story was just saw the two years in the making thing. Uh, Punk announced that he will be in two K twenty four as part of the first DLC pack. Yeah. Uh, very excited to see that the headbangers have yeah. been into DLC Martian Thrasher. Which oh is my god, great. Lita's got a character upgrade, finally. Yeah. I went back and watched Lita um, in video games. Since WWE 13, she's had the same character look. No way. Yeah, and finally she's got different clothes. Uh, and they were, one of the other packs is Pat and Mates. Jesus. <laughs> I think people have too much money. Uh Raquel Rodriguez then very quickly squashed Chelsea Green. This is just over a minute long. Uh, Green announced that she was competing under protest because she should have won the Battle Royal last week and got some local town heat. And then Raquel squashed her. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Jackie interviewed Sammy backstage uh, where he said, oh, win was needed. I'm now finding my path to the championship. Sat and I had a big discussion. He had a tirade about how Sammy should be inserted into this world title match. It makes the most sense. Every 10 years they do this, it should be Sammy going into this match. And I said, buddy, it ain't happening. Sammy literally said on Raw last week, I'm putting my feud with Drew McIntyre on pause because I need to focus on something else. It's not like they sat down in 2004 and went, right, from now on, every 10 years, we're going <laughs> to make a triple threat. On. Nice. Wow. <laughs> Greatest showman reference in 2024. Bloody it's on, hell. It's, it's on our joint playlist. There right? you the go. wife likes it. Um, I, yeah, it's... The, the, uh, Sat, what you at, mate? I like... <laughs> <laughs> Can I point out something really interesting at the Please. moment? This very rarely happens. We're at a 50-50 split currently. Wow. Like, that never happens. We're Goodness never gracious. 50, a, a prolonged 50-50 split. Um, but yeah, like he was... I said, buddy, I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's going for a secondary title. I thought he might go in for the Owens. I thought they might do Owens and Logan. Yeah. And then Sammy gets inserted into that. We talked about this on Raw last week. Um, but it looks like the reported plan is now is Logan versus Randy for the United States Championship. Mm -hmm. Not a multi-person match because maybe the multi-person match is happening elsewhere. We'll come on to that shortly. Because Imperium walk up to Sammy and you're like, well, there it is. Yeah. Sammy versus Gunther. That's the WrestleMania match. And I have been saying it for a couple of weeks at this point, um, that that's something that they could do. We raised the question about it and gone, is that what we want? I don't know. Because there are so many options. What's really interesting is that it feels like Logan Paul, US champion, is the champion for whom a multi-person ladder match makes sense. But... Gunther, Intercontinental Champion, is the one for whom the multi-person ladder match has been set up. Like, yeah. there are so many more actual people with reasons to be in that match than there are on the US title side. Well, we have that next, because Gunther and Imperium come out for a promo. I thought Gunther did a great job in putting Jay over in mm -hmm. this opening. That's one of the great things about him as a wrestler. He was quite open about this. He was like, honestly, I kind of got lucky mm -hmm. last week, um, because he had me beat. And he's a very open, like, you know, a heel is more like, no, I always had a one. But he's like, no, because he's an actual human being. He's like, no, he had me beat last week. But I am still the champion, so I've got to look towards my next challenger now. And kind of my best shot is now gone. He's going to be busy. So who's it going to be to step up? Is it going to be Sami Zayn? Is it going to be The Miz? Our truth I see some of you wanting that. Who's it going to be? Chad Gable? And out comes Judgment Day. I thought that was quite an interesting moment. The first Judgment Day interrupts a promo for a while. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Since last yeah. summer. Oh, it took me right back. Um, but Damien Priest said, like, hey, we want to run Raw. And if we're going to do that, we need your title. And Gunther sort of scoffed at and was like, well, you're not going to do it. You're not going to cash in. It's not going to be Finn over here. It's not going to be that lad with the big head. And Dominic Mysterio squares up to Gunther. And the crowd were like legit like, oh, that's great. Because that'll be, you know, funny to watch the little fly be swatted around and stuff. And Gunther sort of laughs that off. And then him and Damien get into a bit of a, an argument, a bit of a brawl. And Damien has to be held back and sort of taken out of the ring by the Judgment Day. And later on, you had the segment you were talking about earlier where Judgment Day walked up to Rhea Ripley. And she sort of chastised Dom for going after Gunther. And then afterwards, Dom bumps into Andrade. Not El Idolo, just Andrade. So I guess... Undecided. Undecided. Yeah, much like his current direction. <laughs> is um, So he's another person. So 
it feels like we are going to be getting the multi-person match over the IC title because we added a segment later on where Chad Gable pitched to Adam Pearce, look, for me, it's personal. I want to have the match with Gunther at WrestleMania. Mm. So let's look at all the names that we've had listed there. Sami Zayn, I think for sure, is, is in this conversation. Probably not Finn, Priest, Truth, and Miz because I feel like that's the tag program. S- yes, I think they're all out of the way. I, I think they're not. I think that's the tag title match where Awesome Truth win the mm-hmm. match. Uh, Chad Gable, yep. Andrade, Dom, you could have JD in there as well, you know, get him on the card. Maybe Bronson Reed when yeah, he comes Yeah, because well, he was on the phone. Because he was on the phone. So, yeah. you know, there's six names right there. With Gunther, you do a seven-man ladder match. Mm. On paper, seems like a fun match. If I, But if I may, if I may just put on my, my, my little Captain Negative hat here. Not that little at this point. If it is a, if it is a seven person multi man match ladder or not, oh I hope Gunther retains. Yeah, I hope Gunther retains because if Gunther's losing that belt and it's not a one on one match, I don't want to see that. Yeah, no, no thank you. Imagine sir. if the Undertaker Street was broken in a triple threat match. Right. Yeah, right. They didn't exactly. take the pin in. Yeah, but technically he still lost the match. And you know, sure, we're in pure speculation station right yeah. now. The train has pulled into it because no matches have been announced. But they set up a bunch of challenges here, and considering this was a big WrestleMania build show, the only thing I would find satisfying if it happens at WrestleMania and Gunther is involved is sort of a gauntlet situation. Now, I don't want it. Why? Why? Why so violently? No, I hate that even more. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Just thought it might be fun. I didn't mean to have such a visceral reaction to what I've actually... never been. I've not been that rejected in years. I don't to be right back to when I was sixteen. I didn't mean really have such a visceral reaction to what is a genuinely very good suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but the thing is that when I think about the gauntlet, I'm then like, well, what if we had a gauntlet match? Do you remember Kofi Mania? Kofi Mania happened yeah. because Kofi was part of a gauntlet that he sure. went all the way and we were like, yeah, that. It was one of four gauntlets they did to get him into that match. Well, this is it. So the idea that you could say we did a gauntlet match for, for Gunther's challenger um, and whoever wins is the one and then it's like... Oh, sorry. I've, got, I've misunderstood. I think you meant to do a gauntlet match at WrestleMania which no, Gunther is involved in. I had in. thought that and um, then I thought I would rather it be that concept elsewhere yes that i'm much more into mm. the idea of doing a gauntlet match to crown a number one contender mm. for Gun- that i'm into because i want to see a singles match mm-hmm. i want to see gunther versus someone chad gable would be my my, my pick i can't go past seamus but yes chad gable but seamus Shame- uh, is going to be the other name i was going to throw into there as a potential seamus is included in this kind of want it to be seamus as well to finish that story um but yeah if, if gunther's losing this belt because i was thinking about this on the way in i was like sure i mean it kind of does protect him because he gets the belt off of him and he doesn't have to be pinned and you can still carry on. Because he's clearly going to be pushed into the world title picture after the IC belt's done and he's probably going to be going for the title of Bash at Berlin. And that got me then thinking, well, if Damian Priest is cashing in at WrestleMania like many people think that he will do, that that's part. your match is Priest versus Gunther. Mm. And you've almost, you've sowed the seeds now to pay off when you come around to Bash at Berlin in August yeah. with Gunther going in and winning the world title. And the thing about Sheamus is... So uh, keep, so, sorry, to, to finish point, no, so yeah. you want to keep uh, well, sorry. You want to keep Gunther strong, yeah. So a way to do that is he doesn't lose the, doesn't get pinned to lose the belt. However, I think that's creatively unsatisfying for this reign to end without Gunther being involved in it. I just feel like, let's say Chad Gable does it and finishes his story and avenges his daughters crying and wins the belt and is holding the belt and then goes off. Give Gunther a couple months off. He comes back and batters someone over the head. That's the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion in history. It's beaten the likes of Shawn Michaels and Ken Patera. Like, who am I thinking of? Pedro Morales and all that stuff. Like, all of these people on this list. To hold that title for the longest time, he made the Intercontinental title what it is. He lost the belt. Oh, no. You know who else has lost belts? Steve Austin, Triple H, The Rock. Like, it doesn't matter if you lost a belt. Really? if you're presented in the right way on your sort of big moment to come back. It's the follow-up. Yeah. It's the follow-up. It's kind of like, I I, I hate to keep bringing it up, the follow-up to Chad's been poor. Yeah, it's because it was the, there was a moment to do it and they, they let the moment go. I think that one's far easier to heat up than Seamus is personally. I think so too, yeah. because I think you can easily, because Chad's like... Good. For, for, yeah, so it's, good. It's so great. I mean, so is Seamus Did you see well. the video he made? No. Chad Gable has made a uh, promo video basically explaining why he's coming after she- after Gunther. Huh. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it was fully produced on his own. It looks like it, but it, it's 
compelling. Yeah. It's him working out loads and sweating against some fire, which is to represent the yeah. fire that has been lit inside him when he made a daughter cry. I would like to see, and I know you, you mentioned it there, but let's go with the title. Let's go with the tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, Crown a number one contender, whether that's a gauntlet match or whether that's just a single elimination mm. tournament to Crown a number one contender. But at WrestleMania, I want to see it be Gunther versus X, Gunther versus Blank. I don't want to see that one in the multi-man match. I don't want to see Sami Zayn in it, honestly. You don't want to see Gunther versus Sami Zayn? No. What do you do with Sami then? Because it feels like Sami is the guy that... Cause, it and, does. And, and let, me, let me explain why. Have you seen a film called Rocky? Okay. <laughs> If, if I may mansplain to you uh, the, the the plot of the movie Rocky for you. I am going to go through my entire adult life and never watch Rocky as a result of protest for this specific WrestleMania. I think if it's anyone, it's Sammy. And I, I pitched this to uh, to Saturday the weekend as well. There's reports that they're trying to get involved with Sly Stallone mm. and have him as an appearance for WrestleMania. Sammy's there and like Gunther's just knocked him down, beaten him out. Sammy goes to the outside. He pulls himself up on the barricade. And who's standing there but sliced oh, alone? And he's like, hey, yo. And he's like, and he's holding a plushie of the boss baby. <laughs> and he's. Hey, oh, Sammy, I think you want to get in there and want to go fight that man. And Elvis is there as well. <laughs> it's not Elvis. Come it's on. More now. Elvis than no, Sly. I'm, well, I've seen Rocky, so I actually know. <laughs> <laughs> and then he can jump over and he can be like, you know, he could be the trainer in the corner. Get in there, you bum. And you do all of that, do the Burgess Meredith stuff. It'd be tremendous. All right. Um, but I feel like Priest versus Gunther, that's, that, that's a more of a world title program as opposed yeah, to Priest is going to be definitely. going up to the IC belt. New Day and Imperium then had a street fight, which was very, very good. Oh, it was. Oh, this is so much fun. See the bit where um, I think it was Vinci was just wailing on Woods with the with a kendo stick? Bloody hell. Mm. He was just going Going at to town. I Yeah, I mean, this is great. Of course it was. Like These mm. two teams are really, really good together. They've been building this for two years, Dan. <laughs> so, <laughs> Apparently. So I loved the work in this. I also love the Imperium won. Mm -hmm. And won in a dominating fashion as well. I would argue they took like 90% yeah. of this match. Like, But New Day's fiery comeback was great. They incorporated all of the elements of the angles that are built up to this. The chair, the going into the stairs and stuff. I thought they did that really well. Mm. I... Particularly love. There's a there's a great bit in this. I thought this was so so good, where they had a chair in like the between the two ropes, right? Yeah. And they had uh, Woods' head like laying against it, and then they both did dual running drop kicks. But for one, it was inside the ring. One of them was on the outside of the ring, running around the ropes. I thought it was just visually very very cool, mm. and a bit different and new. And I really liked that. Uh, I did too. Also, the New Day have been around for ten years. Oh, this yeah. is the 10th year of the New Day, yeah. which is wild yeah. when you think about it. And people wanted them to be split up real quick because yeah. people hated the New Day when they got together. So it is to their abs uh, like absurd credit that they've not only been able to sustain it for this long, they've there's a new evolution of the New Day, it feels like. There's a, there's a new flavor to their character at the moment. They are a team that got over in spite of bad yeah. creative. I really love it. Really bad creative and as well. Big E put out a tweet who was just sort of like, appreciate them while we're around kind of thing, because you never know when it's going to yeah. go away. And that is something that's very, very true. And it's like absolute credit to him. Uh, we got a video promo for Grayson Waller. Brian Split, LOL. He's in the main event. Uh, and then we got the backstage segment with uh, Chad Gable and Bronson Reed, as you mentioned there. Uh, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark beat The Way. They did. Um, the heels kind of promo that the way got shots at the belts um, and they didn't, which, you know, is fair. Indian Candice last won a match on January 15th and Baszler and Stark won a match on January 29th. So they really did deserve Two that whole weeks shot. Later. Uh, shot that much more than the way did. Uh, Baszler and Stark won pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing to say about the match, but they did then have a digital exclusive that was on the YouTube channel and I think yeah. on the socials, which is the way need to get on the same page. So basically, Candice was like, "Ah, oh, what are we doing? Like, what we haven't won anything? What's going on? What are we at? What are we at? Kind of thing. And Indy's like, it's all right, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get there. We'll just take some time and figure it out. And she's like, well, what do you mean we'll take some time? Uh, increasingly, I find the digital exclusives far more interesting than what goes on on the show. And I'm like, can we incorporate these somewhere? Like, something <laughs> going on? Um... Uh, yeah, it's kind of what we were talking about in the opening segment. This division doesn't get nearly the uh, level of attention it deserves from the creative. Yeah. You could have done a story to get Indy and Candice wins to build them up for the Kabuki Warriors at Elimination Chamber for the tag titles, as opposed to 
the day before the show just announcing, announcing it. it. Yeah, they're having a tag match. You could you could have actually done something. Yeah. <laughs> What a concept. <laughs> Truth was hanging out in his own version of the Judgment Den. He's like built his own version of it, which I think is very cute. Uh, and DIY and Miz walk up saying they're going to get revenge. Truth calls them Regeneration X. Mm-hmm. Yep. I did laugh at the next joke. Oh, the TV? Yeah. Uh, go on then. Which was just that he's they're like, come on then. He's like, well, well, I'll take my things from this little den. I'll, I'll just get my TV. He picks up one of those old TVs that I had in the 90s to watch videos of friends. And uh, it's not plugged in. And Johnny Gargano says, oh, is it wireless? And he just goes, nope, and walks off. And I did I did laugh at yeah. that. I yeah. thought that was quite funny. I just like those TVs. Yeah, mate. Yeah. 90s, so, eh? TVs just used to be better. <laughs> You know, you know uh, it's just, okay. I agree with you mostly about the nineties. That is factually you know, incorrect. I think TVs just used to be better in the nineties. I think TV, the concept. Mm-hmm. Do you know, I think TVs looked nicer in the nineties? They were massive, but not wide massive. They were tall massive. No, <laughs> size doesn't matter, Luke. Inferiority complex or what? <laughs> Come to my house and look at my massive <laughs> TV. My massive TV. But people still say that now. It's just that they're flat and uninteresting to look at. <laughs> Whereas, like, back in the 90s, there's a bit of pizzazz about them. Do you remember in the early 2000s when they were, like, orange? Yo, and now like, that, that I'm on board oh, with. Oh, man. Apple, do you know, Apple used to have some style about them. Uh, hey, they still do. My no. iMac is a beautiful green color. No, 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 I no, get no. compliments on my lovely gold phone all the time, and I don't have a case that's of it. Not, so that's that white. It's gold. Gold. That's oh, the tiny bit of gold so around the gold, outside. Gold. That's not a gold phone. It's that is a gold. white phone with a gold trim. I love gold. That is a disgraceful. I, wouldn't say, I mean, this is a black phone. But it's because it's black all around it. That is not a gold phone. Whatever. Apple used to have style. The 90s had style. Anyway, um, Truth there. Sorry, then Drew came out for a promo segment. Uh, he made fun of CM Punk because uh, the doctors were wondering if Drew could actually make it to WrestleMania after he took an absolute battering in the Elimination Chamber. And he's like, of course I can. I'm not CM Punk. And he sat down, chastised the cameraman for not filming up his, his kilt. And yeah, and he just sort of like, oh, Punk, you know, I, I, I know you're straight, so I drank tw- uh, twice as much for, for, for both of us on the way back. Uh, Mod Mother Jenner, if you've got a pen in hand, mark the time. It's 40306. Classic shithousery from <laughs> Drew here. I absolutely loved it hater of the year uh and he then called out rollins for more serious matters not only the cm punk lark and i loved drew in this segment in particular let's take anything away from rollins who i thought was was very very good Mm -hmm. i think his his logic is very very sound but i adored drew mcintyre in this segment Mm. because drew says to rollins i'm coming it's me and you for the title at wrestlemania i win the elimination chamber just as it was foretold that I was going to do. I told you I was going to do it. So I've just got one request of you. Stop going after the bloodline. Leave them alone. Because if you keep going on with the bloodline, they're just going to interfere in our match. And if I'm going to win this belt from you, I don't want to win it because of the bloodline. I want to win it because of myself. I know what it's like to be screwed out of a title because of the bloodline. So I want to win this on my own. Never referencing the fact that just one week prior, yeah, he beat Cody Rhodes because of bloodline interference. If the advantage is there, he will take it, but he doesn't want it. But he doesn't want it to the point where he won't take it. I thought this was just it's lovely little details yeah. like this that make me adore this Drew character. Specifically, what he said was, um, it'll dampen my victory. <laughs> it wasn't even out of a case of like concern for having a fair fight. He was just like, oh, just don't take my moment away from me. Yeah. It's all about his moment. He gets to point and have his hand raised. It's not even about celebrating with his family or friends. He just wants... I love it. Yeah. I love it all. Because he didn't get his moment yeah. when he won the title in a warehouse, <sighs> which which Rollins referenced. Yeah. I also love as well that Rollins was like, oh, also when I win that bell, I'm not going to be dicking around on SmackDown. Like, yeah. I'm going to be focused on Monday Night yeah. Raw because this is where actual wrestlers do actual mm. wrestling. Not like you when you're going over there and trying to stir trouble. I'm going to be focused on doing this. Mm. But Rollins' point was, I get what you're saying, but there are some risks that are worth taking. And the risk that I have to take here that might lead to interference is I have to get rid of the bloodline. Because if we don't get rid of the bloodline before WrestleMania, then 
they'll just keep interfering. They'll just keep showing up. And before you know it, they're going to be coming after this world title. I was like, lol, no, they won't. They literally said this belt is trash and they don't want it. <laughs> But I thought that Rollins' argument was was a sound one. Mm. That logic hole notwithstanding. Right. Right? Although, that wasn't the episode of SmackDown we're supposed to forget happened. Yeah. So we can say... It's fine. It's fine. Maybe the Bloodline do care about that now. Everything else has been retconned. So I thought it was a logic, a, a good logic, but I, I adored Drew in the same. Agreed. Yeah? Yeah. I'm just, I, <laughs> I, I, he was great. He was great. Uh, we had then the Nijax versus Liv Morgan uh, match. I was disappointed in this match for one reason only they did the my whole oh, spot God. but naya did not say the line bart you guys are such fickle fickle people everyone whinged about my hole no no no, no. Oh, no, no 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 we on this channel here, <laughs> we championed my hole. <laughs> we named a piece of our thumbnail architecture around that. When we used to do like yellow circles with people facing it, we would call that the Naya hole. It was like, <laughs> can you put this picture of Drew in the Naya hole? We championed that spot. That was our spot of the year. Okay. So when she did the spot, and it was the spot, yeah. and she did the sell, and she did not say the line, but I was disappointed in Nia Jax and maybe now I can officially say that this return has been trash and, <laughs> and maybe she just she'd be gone again for a little bit and think about what she didn't do <laughs> aside from that I thought it was very good I thought it was very good um, Nia's, Nia's doing such a good job yeah uh, and Becky caused a DQ which Liv was not pleased about uh, Kathy then interviewed the Smackdown dickheads backstage and Wallace said that we're not going to make sure that Cody doesn't finish his story they acknowledged the passing of Ole Anderson mm -hmm. I think that if, if ever there was a case of there's no more Vince McMahon in WWE. Them acknowledging Ole Anderson on TV mm. is very, very much there. There is a great story of Ole Anderson that when uh, Vince bought the WCW library, and in which included some of his tapes, he took them into his back garden and burnt them because he didn't want Vince McMahon to have them. Oh, I thought you meant Vince did that. No, I was no, like, no, no. Ole just did not want Vince to have anything wow. uh, to do. He's like, I'm not having any of my stuff with that man. Mm. So he burnt it all. He's like, Goodness. Yeah, he uh, Shane Helms uh, shared a story of... Oh, I saw that. He arrived at the power plant in WCW and Ole Anderson was like, oh, you're looking for a contract? And Shane was like, no, I've, they just signed me to a three-year deal. So Ole replied to him, what are you doing here then? Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Uh, so yeah, they acknowledged the, the passing of that. Then we had the backstage segment with Liv arguing with Becky. And then they set up Jackie Redmayne's going to be interviewing Jay Uso on her show, the Jackie Redmayne show. And to promote that, here's Jackie interviewing Jay. Yeah. Bold. It's a bold strategy to interview someone to promote the fact you're interviewing them. Well, they're a special guest on her hockey show. I don't know whether or not that's an interview segment or if it's just having Jay... I'm being, uh, I'm hey, being glib down for the purpose You are, of but maybe Jay's going to take a little circle and, and, and circle around some like blades of the hockey and take the piss out of them. Look at, look, at the, look at the hockey blades. Aren't they sharp, said Pat McAfee. Uh, Drew and Jay then had a brawl, which was uh, they're having a match next week. And then our main event was Cody Rhodes versus Grayson Waller. During this match, they announced that Paul Heyman was backstage oh, I loved that. for this. That felt um, cool. And when I saw how much time there was left, I was like, oh, okay, well, that's the last 10 minutes of this show then. Mm. And sure enough, uh, Cody Rhodes just beat Grayson Waller very quickly. Uh, under eight minutes, in fact. It didn't mm -hmm. feel like a main event of the show. But what happened next was and also it shouldn't have felt like a main event of the show it's grayson waller like it's you know it's smackdown miz he is a lower mid card guy he shouldn't be going toe to toe Look, with cody i've Rose. just got you ran onto the miz this year don't make me have to do it with grayson waller as well uh, that one i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get bud it worked last <laughs> Because Paul Heyman comes out with uh, security. There weren't really security. He revealed that they were NYPD officers who were currently suspended. Yeah, he said they were they were off duty. Actually, they've been suspended, but that's beside the point. There's a lot of uh, Paul Heyman trying to make a point and then correcting himself on something. He was like, I would like to... Well, actually, no, I'm going to, I'm just yeah. going to ask you. Uh, and basically, Heyman's point was he wanted to ask Cody to withdraw his challenge to The Rock or else. And Cody was all fired up and he said, look, like a lot of these people here, I used to be a fan of The Rock, but now I'm sick mm. because I've done nothing but play nice guy with The Rock. I could have gone out there in the media interviews and buried him, but I've not done that. But now I've had enough of that. And yeah, I do want, I still want this match. 
and Paul Heyman sends the security guys in. Cody Rhodes beats all of them up and he has the great ending line. The bloodline are not hunting me. I am hunting the bloodline. I was quite aroused by this segment, to yeah. be completely honest with you. I just found it quite sexy. Paul Heyman then got two phones out. Yeah. One of them with a Roman Reigns cover, one of them with a rock cover. Which is so camp. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> but I very much enjoyed it. He called both of them for a conference call to let them know what's happening. The Rock is going to be on SmackDown this there Friday. There is a capacity in iPhones to have more than one person on the call. There was no need to call them both on separate phones and have it be a Mean Girls conversation. But also, like, you don't have to you know, they've also got capacity to have more than one num- number stored this is it yeah it's not even just the calling thing yeah you know, like it's like call roman reigns call the rock uh so anyway the rock's gonna be on smackdown this friday cody Rhodes is gonna be on and he's looking for his answer to the rock so this coming friday we should find out oh. if this singles match is happening and when it is going to happen or if it's going to be the tag match or yeah. anything else. We'll, we'll certainly see what happens with that. But uh, I thought the end line was very, very good. This segment was absolutely delicious. I loved the insertion in the, just as they were going to break. The only way I could have improved it, and this is, this is a nitpick, is the idea of like a camera finds Paul Heyman entering the arena that they sort of put in split screen to let the audience know, oh, he's here rather than just Michael Cole telling. There's something about the energy and freneticism of that that I like. So he was behind Waller and Theory during their interview. Like if he, if he was spotted. Oh, like he the, was? He was in the background of oh, that shot. Delicious. I didn't spot it at the time. It was pointed out to me afterwards. I'll go back and find that. But I, I liked very much that it made me sit up in the office while I was just watching the end of the show. Um, and I was like, yeah, yeah, skip through this bit so I can see this showdown. I thought Cody's delivery was so full of yeah, grit. Mm-hmm. Um, there was an element of fury in his voice that you don't always see from Cody. And I think that's the thing, the fire, the passion, the energy, all of that was in in abundance. The um, the, the little beat down where he almost decapitated that poor bloke with a chair like by throwing it and he took it square in the face and then hit him with a crossroads, sends them all out, standing on the ropes with like sweat and muscle and all attitude i'm the bloodline hunter i it was deeply erotic i loved it so so great yeah and it was a moment where i was like man ditch seth like you do not need, <laughs> you do no, we not need the avengers <laughs> you do not need this guy buddy you've got this all on your mm. own because you are the man yeah right now. he looked like the man he did yeah but you know, we also said that last year, so you know we'll, yeah. we'll see when we get to when we get to WrestleMania 40. But I thought Cody. Speaking would, of things being evergreen, you can over whipped cream. Don't don't do it. I thought Cody was exceptional in yeah. this final he moment was. here. I thought he was great, uh, and I thought it was a a good episode of Raw. It's like it's a thumbs up episode. It was. It's not a show to watch if you want to watch wrestling, uh, because mm-hmm. I would say the street fight's probably the only match on the show you'd go out of your way to go and see. Yeah, everything else was fine. Yeah, fine or one minute. Yeah. Yeah. But like I thought broadly the promo stuff was was actually like, very good. I, we're on the road to WrestleMania. I want my stories to be engaging. I want to be finding out what's going on. I want the next level of intrigue and drama and that's really what Monday Night Raw is for. WrestleMania is for me to really focus on the wrestling. I, that, that's a whole other conversation that's yeah. been in the X discourse recently. Ugh. Um so yeah, I but so for what I wanted the show to be, this absolutely delivered. Uh, but that is what we thought of the show. There is a poll currently right now, which has got a 69% thumbs up. Nice. Uh, go and let us know your thoughts on that. Sorry. Sorry. That, that yawn wasn't at your joke, but it might as well have been. That was uh, Dom did that during the Becky promo, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Becky was doing her promo on Rhea. Dom openly yawned during it, which they I had a was, long flight. I thought it was delightful. They must be knackered. Um, but yeah, let us know what you thought of this by voting in the poll. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. We're going to give a special shout out now to our Patreon Pledge Hammers. If you are one of our Patreon Pledge Hammers, you've got a new episode of After Dark, which went up last Friday, mm-hmm. featuring your good I was self there. and myself as well, Pete Tempest and Abby for a little bit of that as well. And tomorrow is our three hour, 40 minute review of WWE Extreme Rules 2014, both in video and audio format. The second part of our breakup of the Shield story that we're looking at that goes live tomorrow same time as the news goes up so keep an eye out for that because we're really really excited for this episode it's very very funny mm. uh we're very fun at the very least i had a great time recording it good um we particularly enjoyed doing some some classic roman promos oh yeah like in the lead up to elimination chamber where he just went Blame the shield <laughs> 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 and after wrestlemania the double triple power bomb 
Where, where's that Roman? God, he's come because that <laughs> the stuff he did on Friday was incredible. What a journey. So, uh, yeah, go and check that out. Patreon.com forward slash rest talk. But if you're one of our $25 and above Patreon pledge hammers, you get your name read out on the show like these fine folks. The Incredible Tarzo. Keep rolling. The Rick Pesh. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Tony Chabroni. Trev Dog 316. Commentator of the Century, Vince Phillips. Willie Big E Singleton. The Lumberjacks. XX Logs XX. Hannah A, baby. The principle of success, Luke Kelly. On top of the world and the top rope, David Sanson. The Aztec warrior, Hector Rodriguez. And of course, our fantastic mod team. Thank you all so much. Andy. Ian. James. John. Les. Rob. And mod mother, because she never puts her name down. Well, we can be able to see it all. Cannot do this show without our moderating team. They keep all of you in check, so give them their flowers in the chats while we read out your remaining ultra chat. Loved all of that. What a lovely song that was. So, the poll. Do you like the Pat McAfee gimmick? Yes. 55%, no 45%. Well, that's 55% of you that are dead to me. <laughs> Simply, um, I know there's a question there about the uh, the 85k uh, stream. It is there's still being planned. We got there's a massive shoot happening this week. Ah, uh, yes, that has means that pretty much everyone's not in the office uh, this week. I can say what it was. It was we're, we're shooting it, clock it's, tower. It's the clock tower. We're doing clock yeah, tower. We're doing the big clock everyone's clock away. <laughs> so it's like there's no one here. So I can't do any big plans for it at the moment. But it is. We're still working on it in the background. But this week is not the week to be doing those plans. No one's here. That's kind of been taken over a lot of the yeah. Uh, production side of things but we will be getting to that blake here said uh, we all keep predicting what sammy's going to do at mania but no one has mentioned the best potential story main events in one year to not even making it on the card the next it would all be cody and jay's fault for separating him and kevin owens too i do i do like the fact that you've referenced that there the, the idea that it, he was split from his mate they've never really talked about that the idea that kevin is it his best friend Kevin got taken away so that Jay could deal with his bloodline stuff and the bloodline stuff is still going on. I'm intrigued by that idea. Geek of Arabia, I just want everyone to appreciate the visual of Paul Heyman using two separate phones to call Roman and The Rock at the same time for a group call. Heyman is a true thespian. Space Viking, I think WWE have messed up unless I'm seeing this wrong. The US title should be the ladder match with AJ, LA Knight, KO, RKO, and Logan. The IC title should have a multi-man match, preferably on WrestleMania Night 1, with the winner getting Gunther on Night 2. I think you can do that on the Raws leading up to it. Mm. Um, five but, weeks. We've got five, five Raws left. Yeah, I agree. I think if any title, any mid-card title should be a multi-man ladder match, should be that US yeah. one. Liam Leonard has been a member for 30 months in a row, says you can never over-push the Irish. <laughs> we just take over. Double L Liam Leonard right there. Uh, Caleb Cannon said, I get why the workhorse babyfaces would want to wrestle both nights of Mania, but why would Rock, vs. Rock and Roman agree to this alleged tag match? Especially if it's just for pride and no prize. Why risk wearing himself out the night before his title defense? Mm. It's a good question. Depends on how much they want to kill that poor Cody kid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I suppose well, it'll come out in the storyline, you yeah. think. They keep hinting that they're going to let us know what Cody and Rock said, and I, I, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to their showdown. Yeah. Van Dalia, 1998. In your opinion, if both men's belts change hands at Mania, would Priest cashing in on Drew or Cody make a better story? Drew. I yeah, absolutely Drew. Cashing in on Drew is a better story. I don't want him to cash in at Mania. No? No. Don't want it at all. I think it's such cruel, cruel fate for, for Drew McIntyre. But I'd rather see Drew McIntyre, this Drew McIntyre, as champion. I think, rather, because I... I Imagine the swagger. I think it's more... We've also got till July. I pitched this to... Uh, sat on the uh, Elimination Chamber review as well, but Gunther versus Drew for the world title at Bash at Berlin. Mm. Like... <laughs> with that beautiful like German energy in there. Yeah. The, the European heel yeah. champion coming in to be booed because he's not from this part of Europe. Mm. Oh, there'd be some great stuff to do there. Gunther is Austrian. Yes, but he is made his name through WXW who is a, like you know arguably the biggest German promotion. I know, but it's the same Clash of the Castles situation where it was like Yeah, there's this it's this, you know his Aust hometown of Aust Germany. Exactly. Austria <laughs> is just a, a small subset of Germany. Uh watcher, Seth, we need to beat the bloodline for the good of the industry as a whole. WWE is no monopoly. My back sucks, never sells back. Becoming a dad makes you not selfish. Arrogant heel for a year and a half after becoming one. They want my title, Roman, lol no. So watcher there sort of pointing out that a lot of Seth's arguments 
don't actually make any sense. But as long as Seth believes that. <laughs> Which he does. Gale Force, do you think either Tiffany or Bron have time enough to get a feud ready for Mania? If so, against who? My bet is on is Bron versus Andrade, Rising Star versus Returning Talent. I actually, I, I sort of liked the idea of um, Bron and Baron Corbin taking the belts off Awesome Truth pretty quickly. Like, yeah. I don't need Awesome Truth to have a long title reign. I just yeah, want yeah. them to get involved. Um, or if you want to keep Bron singles star on, on SmackDown at the moment, I don't think they need matches at WrestleMania necessarily. Um, Bron and Andrade would be weird given that one of them is signed to Raw and one of them is signed to SmackDown I know Bron's a bit lol but you know the Buster Groove Buster 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 Groove I will never ever run you would love the soundtrack to Buster Groove on the okay. Playstation right. oh you would love it it's so good anyway, is that a read i don't know uh, the buster groove as a sammy fanboy who's a bit afraid that he might never ever have a world title run i can understand the live fans a little but saying that becky is overbooked is just wrong who's your favorite to go against gunther mine is obviously sammy love you stay groovy it's chad sammy chad or uh seamus but currently right now it's chad the one i'm sort of willing mm. golden knights 84 hi luke and prof i believe that becky is exactly where she needs to be and i don't understand the backlash because she's helping elevate the division luke Steinemass is the right choice because the numbers actually check out also because i ran out of room in my last message dan how good was the devil wears prada reunion at the sag awards i love that film. i did have a little like a ah moment very pleased. Baptized Atheist said, I love the idea of Dom putting a valiant effort against Gunther, leaning towards underdog babyface, which could start a JD turn to anti-hero family faction versus full heel Imperium. Oh, no, I don't think I want babyface Dom right now. Oh, I think I want babyface Judgment Day. No. I want. I, I like the idea of babyface priest at some point. I'm yes. intrigued by that. Uh, babyface Dom? No. I, I've got the same level of pushback to that that I have this idea of babyface Austin Theory. Oh, <laughs> no, no tar. Aiden, Liv lost the Rumble and Elimination Chamber. Becky hasn't fought for the main roster single title for over a year and a half. Becky has already had one-on-one -on -one title matches that Mania ruined by adding a third person. This is not Liv's story. Keep Liv out. Keep Liv on ice, simply. It's not even keeping her away. It's just keeping her until she can have a better... St this It would be much better for yeah. Liv. Long game. Uh, booking like a mark. I think Pat McAfee's graphics can be effective if used as a proper storytelling device. He can highlight Bly's tag, or if only one foot touches the floor in a battle royal. If they don't play it for laughs, I think it can work. This is it. Like it, it's the analysis of it all would be interesting if it was like, yeah, they didn't see it there, or like this is the where, this is where the the talk of it is, or whatever. I don't know, but zooming in on Liv Morgan's face while she's in a freeze frame, which is cruel to anybody, or or the same thing with like, there's the eye line coming from, or like zooming in on Drew's face. It was stupid and it undercuts things use it properly donald gold i have a stein and maths t-shirt i do not have a pipe bond t-shirt love you guys thanks for everything wow so no accounting for taste i Point suppose proven power packers 90 has been a member for 30 months in a row said i showed my roommate both the pipe bomb and stein and maths he really loved the pipe bomb but he loved stein and math more wouldn't stop laughing and quoting it it's more iconic. Take it up with Ollie. I wasn't on the show. It's more iconic than the pipe bomb. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> Christine said, Luke, please ignore if this was answered. Okay, so this wasn't actually answered. So this is very interesting. On Elimination Chamber, they were doing shoeies where you pour beer into a shoe and then you drink it from the shoe. Right. And so I said the same thing. I was like, oh, is that where Bluey comes from? I Because she's blue. And I was like, and it rhymes with shoey. It's also an Australian show. I was like, is it just a cultural reference? I think that's more just they like to put Y's on the end of things. Well, that's it. I was, I was just, I, it just came to me and I was like, oh, is that a thing? And then the live chat said, no, it's not. Right. But Christine has a more detailed answer. Bluey is derived from the dog breed, the blue healer, and not related at all to a shoey. Didn't go to Perth as I'm going to Mania instead, and today's Raw has ramped up the excitement. Looking forward to the review. And that's why she's Bluey healer. Ah, so I don't know a lot about dogs. <laughs> Okay, right. Blue and, healers are lovely. And they're the healers. They're yeah. the healer family. Ah, okay. I don't so know a lot about Bluey. Bluey healer. There you go. Oh, okay. Well, that's fascinating. Thank you so much. Every day's a school day. Sheldon Jackson said, tonight, uh, last night, it was nice to see AJ Kirsch from Tough Enough yesterday as one of Heyman's security guards. Um... I think, yeah, I thought Sean Rossap pointed that out mm. as well, but I, I didn't actually see Tough Enough, so I have no idea. And Gabriel here says, do you think that Rhea drops the belt to Becky at Mania? Personally, I do feel there are too many 
unbeatable heel champs at the moment with Roman, Gunther, and Rhea. But because hers has been the shortest, I'm okay with it going to SummerSlam, maybe her versus Liv. I think in order to tell regular compelling stories, titles need to change hands with more regularity than they currently do. I'm not advocating for hot potato, and I'm not advocating for no long title reigns. But I think we've just spent... We're looking at having gone nearly two calendar years or so like with gunther as ic champion we're looking at going a full calendar year with Rhea. uh obviously roman has been going for a really long time eo has held it since SummerSlam. seth has held it since night of champions it's it gets stale after a while mm. you need a little turnover uh, and that is it i can now tell you the result of the poll 64 percent thumbs up mid 31 percent kind of what the elimination chamber got sort of mm. that ended up with split which i thought was about right that i thought that was a three out of five show and i thought this was a bit of a three out of five show as well yeah 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 it, i actually liked it a little bit more than three out of five i thought chamber, it was or to the, oh chamber know? oh chamber was fine yeah i'm yeah. oh, sorry that's what i was asking you oh i'm sorry to... i was distracted um, i was just about? i was just being nosy at the mod <laughs> chat <laughs> Whoopsie. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. We'll be back on Thursday with the AEW Dynamite review. So please go check out yesterday's review of Collision and SmackDown being hosted by Dan and Tempest. And then it is Revolution. Yeah, yeah, but not uh, Dynamite on Thursday. Dynamite on Thursday. And then it'll be the Dynam uh, the Revolution predictions going up mm -hmm. on Thursday as well. It'll be myself and Tempest doing those. Um, Tempest and I doing the review as well. And then we'll be building up to the Revolution review on Monday for Sting's retirement and that triple threat, which I'm so, so excited for. Mm. And I'm now, I'll talk about this on the predictions, but a few people have suggested in the chats, and I'm now trying to will it into existence that Hangman wins. With the help of the Bucks. Ooh. And we get Heel Elite. Heel Elite. Heel Elite running the place. All Heel Elite wrestling. Oh. And now that I've and now that I've heard the idea, particularly if they play off the full gear finish where they come down and give him the nod. Mm. Oh, it will be so, so beautiful. And I kind of want it now. Mm -hmm. I am loving what the Bucks are doing. They've renamed the Meltzer driver to the Tony Khan driver. <laughs> it's so I love them. They're so yeah. great. Anyway, that's all we've got time for on this edition of the show. Please do leave a comment down below with your thoughts on this episode of Raw. Give this show a little thumbs up as well and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and have made it this far. We'll see you on Thursday. I've been Luke Owen, DAD. That has been Dan Layton. Jam that jam.